I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today's flute tip is on singing while playing for better resonance in your tone. Have you ever tried playing and singing at the same time? It is an extended flute technique, but it's not a terribly difficult one. And let's try doing that because there are some really nice tone benefits from doing that. So it's not just a technique that is used in extended in 21st century type of pieces, but it's a technique, it's an exercise that you can use to warm up that will help build resonance in your tone. And we'll talk about why in just a second. If you've never sung and played at the same time, let me just give you a couple pointers as to how to start doing that. You want to use a, a tone that is right now uh, that is easy for you. Don't try to sing too high, too low, whatever is natural for you. So I'm going to sing ah uh, because that's a nice easy sound in my register. Now I'm going to sing that tone, but I'm going to form an embouchure, all right? And while I form that embouchure, I'm going to sing and I'm going to blow some air at the same time. So I'm going to start off with ah, uh, and I make an embouchure. Oh, now I'm going to blow air because I just sang and I shaped the embouchure, but now I want to blow some air. Oh. Now my tone changed when I had to blow some air, but it works. I still have that tone and now I'm blowing air. If you're having trouble getting that, practice that without your flute because that's going to be the key. You hum first, oh, and then shape the embouchure, oh, now blow the air. Now, I right now, I use more air than I probably would when I'm playing on the flute because I don't have that embouchure resistance going there. So I'm, you, when I play on the flute, I'm not going to use that much air. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take an F and I'm going to make that embouchure. And I'm going to sing that in wherever my voice higher than that, lower than that, whatever is natural for you. Now I'm going to, uh, try to do them both at the same time. And if you, if you want to get the humming going first. So I started it by humming that I made the embouchure, then I blew the air. Now, in order to do that, I really do have a lot of support going on. I have a lot of pressure coming from my stomach and that helps me to get them both going at the same time. Okay. Now let's talk about why you would want to do this. So apart from a piece that uses it, and I've played many uh, 21st century pieces that have extended techniques and use singing and playing, and it's a really cool effect and um, adds a great nuance to a piece when that is put in by the composer. But you, there is this book, which I have here on my stand by Robert Dick called Tone Development Through Extended Techniques. And it's a very interesting book. He's got a lot of words that help you understand what it's all about. And in it, he has a section on singing and playing. Um, and he has, I'm not gonna go into all the stuff that he writes about. I'll just talk about that in my own words here. He has you start playing arpeggios and he has you start on an F a C arpeggio and you sing at the same time. Now you can sing if, if you're a guy, you can sing in whatever register fits your voice. And if you're a soprano, you altos make it work for you. This in his particular exercise, it goes up really high and I can't sing up that high. And so I just take it down a level. So I'm constantly, when I'm playing this exercise for me, I'm singing this and then when it goes too high, I'm dropping down to here and I'm following it and then I'm dropping back down. Um, so when you do this type of exercise, allow your voice to have some flexibility because you don't have to try to be a mouse and squeak up some really high range. So he starts with this A arpeggio or F arpeggio 
And I'm just going to start the way I showed you. Hum first. It's a low F, so I'm going to start low. Now I'm going to jump down the octave. Here it's too high. Now I'm jumping down the octave again. And so on. The exercise is a little bit longer, and then he's got other things for you to do. All right. Now, if you do that, what you should do is stand back and say, okay, now what did that do? Why would I sing and play, and what does that have to do with tone? Well, when you sing, Generally, it opens up your throat. Ah, if I'm singing like that, I'm opening my throat. Basically, the back of your tongue goes down and your soft palate goes up. Singers talk about that kind of thing all the time. And we want this straight pipe going all the way up into our sinuses. And when I sing and play, it helps me to get there faster. If I'm just thinking, if I now I know how to do this, and so I can do that. And think about, I'm playing that note and go, okay, is this down? Is that up? Am I keeping it tension free? And is it a straight pipe into my sinuses? I can do that because I've done it. I know. I've talked about it. I've trained. I've ta taught on it. Um, but if you haven't really done that to have a handle on it, singing and playing is a perfect way to understand that. You can use other exercises. You don't have to have Robert Dick's book, although it's a great book to have and it's got a lot of other exercises in it. But you could take your Taffanel and Gobert number one and that is these <laughs> And you can take that exercise and sing and play. And it doesn't have to be fast. Do it at a nice, easy tempo. All you're doing is thinking, is it relaxed? And when you sing and play, you, you say, wow, yes, that does feel different back there. Even, I mean, I can feel it and say, well, do I really play with it that open? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to think about it now. I'm going to play this Taffanel and Gobert exercise with, my, with singing and playing. And so on and so forth because I feel my throat open up. Now do it slowly, but do it over maybe that whole exercise or a page of doing that and then go into some solos and Robert Dick uses um, a Bach sonata here and he says now do it with a Bach sonata <laughs> to use this one you can use whatever you have any a baroque sonata probably is a perfect thing to use because generally it doesn't go up too high and doesn't go down too low and you're just get used to playing and feeling that throat that's open once you do that and you feel like you're opening it up then play it and then stop the humming <laughs> And the idea is 
Did you keep your throat the same or did you close it off? Did it stay open or did you go back to your old way of playing? And you can do that through your Tafanel and Gobert exercises. Play and play and play and then drop the singing and say, did I keep it open through there? I think you'll find that if you do that, you have a good exercise, a good time of warming up using that. And then you go on to other things Go on about your day. Come back and practice a little later. You'll remember that you opened your throat. And I think you'll be amazed at the sound you get. So try that. Do singing and playing. It adds this resonance because once you start engaging the sinuses, a resonance comes that you can't get any other way. You need to have that resonance for your sound to carry for your pianos to be heard in a hall even though you're playing piano it's a fantastic way to practice it's a great exercise and it gives you a little variety in your practice routine so today's flute tip is singing while playing for more resonance and you'll see that you do get more resonance have fun if you like today's video press the like button subscribe Comment below and share it with your friends.